Hey, welcome to this week's Android Developer Office Hours. Uh, I'm joined here in London by Matt Gold, Chris Bangs, Nick Butcher, and I'm Rich Hyman, which I should have said up front. Uh, we've already got, uh, I think it's David and Viva joined us in the Hangout. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. As usual, we'll be discussing Android development topics. And also, as usual, we won't be discussing roadmaps, future things, unreleased or unannounced, um, I guess, roadmaps. I don't know. I said word roadmaps twice. Uh, thank you for all the questions in the moderator this week. <laughs> <laughs> we do have one. So uh, maybe we'll just get the uh, two, actually. We'll get those out of the way up front and then just go into some kind of discussion. And hopefully, some more people will join us and keep the content going throughout. Uh, done. OK, what was our one moderator question? We had a, uh, why was the US office hours stopped? And is it coming back? Oh, has it been stopped? Yes. Um, is it gone for good? I think so. The US team um, played with the office hours format for a while. And uh, they decided to move on to other formats, uh, like this week in Android. Um, Maybe it was a time zone thing, but they weren't getting too many viewers. There seemed lots of people walking into this time slot, yes. and not so much for that time slot. It's funny. We do. We used to call this Android Developer Office Hours e EMEA. Maybe we still do. But um, yep. we're looking <laughs> at the statistics on YouTube, just from muscle more than 50% of the viewers are actually from the US. So maybe it's just because they can get up in the morning and watch it before they go to work. Or so I'm guessing, David, where are you, David? I'm in North Carolina. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So if they're sample size. I'm sure there's some. They can't hear this. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, and the other, well, let's we'll take one from the floor. Does anyone in the hangout have a question for us? And hello, Amit. Thanks for joining as well. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, Chris, we discussed uh, last time you can use uh, Wi Fi Direct oh, yeah. as a way of uh, pair to pair. Yeah. Uh, do you know uh, what's the impact for the mobile battery or the device you're trying to pair? Um, I don't off the top of my head. I haven't used the API much myself, so I can't comment on battery life and that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I, I imagine it's better than ba um, Bluetooth, but it that's is. me guessing. Hmm. Anyone else got any experience with Wi-Fi Wi Direct? I don't. But I mean, I have Wi-Fi on the whole time on my device, right? I assume that turning Wi-Fi Direct on, at least in discovery mode, doesn't really impact me. Mm. But is it doing more active stuff because it's using all the multicast stuff? Because right. isn't it two different chipsets at that point? Sort of. Really? I, I don't know. I know it has to be different hardware, so I'm wondering whether it's one to receive sort of mm. one to receive one to actually. Develop. Maybe we need to install Doctor Power and turn on Wi-Fi Direct and see if it uses much battery life. Um, I tell you what. I'll make a note of this question. And, um, I imagine it's better just because of the sheer amount of bandwidth you have, so the radio can go to sleep quicker. With Bluetooth, you're limited to 100k a second, whereas Wi-Fi Direct, you're in the megabits. Oh, you mean the transmissions are yeah. a little bit quicker and you power down? Exactly. That's a good question. But that's a guess. Yeah. I'd honestly say the best thing to do is probably benchmark it. Yeah. OK. What are you using it for, Viva? Uh, I was looking for a way to connect my Google TV uh, with uh, my tablet and my um, telephone, mm -hmm, okay. but I can't use it for my Google TV because uh, it's 4.1 and up. Right. Yeah. But I really? try to connect my t my telephone with my tablet to see what it's doing. Maybe GCM. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that'd be quite And there goes the weekend again. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm trying I'm using uh Movil and I'm looking into what's the other framework called? Join. All join. Mm -hmm. Uh but they're really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. All join's supposed to be quite stable, but I've well, it looks quite good from the website. I don't know what the actual code's like, but uh, the Java doc and the implementation examples are really terrible, so oh, okay. uh, a, a basic application is a, a lot of work to do. Mm. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers. Does anyone yeah. else in the Hangout have a question? David? Well, no, I was trying to look at, um, I was just watching another show um, last night, and they were talking, um, this this application would allow you to share bandwidth across all your devices. 
I'm trying to remember the name of it now, and I can't remember now. Mm. It'll connect them all together. Well, they used to use Wi-Fi Direct, and they stopped that option. It's only Bluetooth now. So mm. I think they were... There might be something to that. Do you have the link for the the video? I'm trying or? to find it. It was I was on another show, and I don't want to like you know give advertising and all that, but uh, I watched it. Um, all about Android. They were talking about it. That's right. And, and so, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it was on a show about Android only, but it was all about Android, and um, they were showing it now, but it's only Bluetooth. And if I find it, I'll I'll uh, I'll send it up. Okay, great. Great. Hey there, Tyrone as well. Welcome to the Hangout. Do you have any, uh, any questions for us today? Uh, I think you might be muted there. We can't hear you. Yeah. No. Hello. There we go. Hey. Hey. Hey, guys. Uh, no questions. I'm just kind of listening and see if I can pick up some pointers and stuff. Nice. Okay. Well, nice to have you here. Thank and you. Marty's also just joined us. Hey there, Marty. Looks like you must be on a phone. Uh, or, uh, hey, yep, I'm on Nexus. Something, is that Nexus 4, would you say? Nexus 7, I thought. Uh, uh, Nexus 7, yeah. I'll just be listening in. Okay, hey. Are you the same Marty who's just asked a question in the uh, moderator? Yep, that's me. Do you, do you want to go ahead and ask it on video? Sure. I was just asking if the if Photosphere is open sourced, and if the, if it is, is there an example somewhere that I can review? Hmm. I didn't think the camera up was. Good question. I very much doubt that Photosphere is open sourced. Yeah. Um, we have some APIs now, which allow you to uh, check if images are Photospheres and that sort of thing, and playback Photospheres. But I don't believe that Photosphere itself is open source now. Is, is there some uh, examples for how to use those APIs? They're part of the Google Play Services library there, yeah, for how to check the, if it's Photosphere and then launch the Photosphere viewer. OK. What is it? Developer. Right, great. Google.com slash Android. And, and the Google Play Services is in there. Yeah, check Google Play okay. Services. Um, if you've got the support library on your um, downloaded into your SDK, it will be on your, your filing system already on your, on your PC. Under Wonderful. Thank you. Extras. So okay. take a look in there as well. Okay. Coming in thick and fast now. Wow. Oh, we've got some questions. We are. Yeah. in. Okay, I should open up the moderator again. Then. Any other live questions in the room before we plow on with the moderator? I'm looking at you, Paul. Cool. What cool, John? Oh, yeah. Hi guys. Uh, no, nothing. Uh, I, I, oh, later on, I'll come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> and Marty's put his uh, tablet down on the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really nice thing he's got going on there. Let's see if we can figure out where he's doing like CSI on it. Oh, too late. Uh, it's now in his pocket. In half. In half. Okay. Right, let's, let's crack on then. Yeah. Uh, I'll ask one from there. Um, so, Evelyn in Barcelona says All developers will be able to reply to comments on, place on Google Play. If so, is there any estimated date? So, I guess this would fall under the. Uh, you know, what we said at the top of the show, that we're not going to comment about roadmap and stuff. Like, even if we did know a date when it was going to roll out to everyone, then it would probably change and, and would be wrong. So uh, I think the intention is to this roll it out to everyone. It hasn't happened yet. We've been expanding the trial group. But That's sit tight, it will happen. Yeah. Exactly yeah, I are. sure would love to be able to just, I would sure love to be able to just at least talk to people that call me um, names to see why they really are having problems with my apps. Yeah, <laughs> as the instead of uh, just getting getting the <laughs> saying, oh, this is not appropriate, you know. Has the Google Plus identity stuff helped at all? You've been able to reach out to them directly by that. No, I see. Like they say, they're a Google user, but I don't. I right. so all the ones that a Google user are historic. All new reviews that go in as of about a month ago have to have a Google Plus identity associated with them. So you will be able to reach them and at least find them on Google Plus and speak back to them that way if you want. Uh, the previous Google user ones, if, if you search by um, date entered instead of by relevance, then you'll see that the top ones should all have an ID next to them. Uh, obviously, okay. the ones that people have ticked, uh, this was useful to me, filter to the top in relevance. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, interesting to see. 
so thanks for the question, Evelyn, and sorry we can't really commit to dates and stuff like that, but sit tight. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to publish an APK internally within a company and not through the Play Store that uses yes. the Google Maps API? <laughs> it was, yes, it took, that uses the Google Maps API. Possible new cases to uh, Marty a little music. Everyone dives on Marty. <laughs> okay, so the, yeah, the first part, I think as Viva said as well, uh, the answer was yes. Is it possible to publish an APK internally within a company? Yes. Uh, and you can do that inside the Play Store. If you're using a Google Apps domain, you get your own little, um, your own domain square inside the application section of the Play Store, and you can have all your employees access those applications, so that's great. Uh, but then it goes on to say, not through the Play Store, <laughs> which is slightly strange. And then it goes on to say that it uses the Google Maps API. So is the Google Maps API linked to publishing through the Play Store? No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. It's just, so yeah, it's entirely possible. As long as the device has got Google experience, so it's yeah. got Google Maps, it should work. Mm -hmm. The only like things that are linked to, to publishing through the Play Store are the things that use the market, the Play Store client, uh, which would be LVL, uh, in-app billing. Subs. Yeah, in-app billing so subscriptions. And expansion probably, files. Yeah. Expansion files, thank you there, Viva, yeah. OBBs. Uh, that's probably it. And the rest of the APIs that you get available to you via the API console are Google APIs as opposed to Android APIs or Play APIs, and you can access all of those uh, for your application. Most of them will have certain amounts of free quota, and then you can either ask for more or go into paid quota. But that's separate Google services. So yes, you can use Maps, as long as the device you're distributing it on has Google Maps. OK. So next question. Software Bloat from uh, Milan has asked, if I add um, a birthday date to my contacts, it would be great if the date would sync with G Calendar and set notifications for that event. Um, it actually already does that. So when you set your birth date, in, when, if you go into Google Calendar on the web, you can add a calendar called Contact Birthdays, um, and it automatically shows in calendar. It doesn't do um, notifications at the moment, um, but yeah, it will show in calendar. So I've got that on the screen. It's just there as an option. It's just uh, there as an option. Contact hash pro tip. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Might do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Calendar.google.com. Good stuff, Chris. I didn't know that. It's awesome. Sounds it. OK, next one. Uh, OK, so Andre in Prague, I've probably mispronounced that, asks uh, if subscriptions are going to be part of the B3 billing API uh, and at least a time frame. So, <laughs> again, <laughs> see you at the top of the show. Yeah. We're not going to be a commit to a time frame. Is it? Have we definitely said it's going to be part of the free billing API? Yeah. I think everything is going to the new infrastructure. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it says inside the documentation that it will, um, but it doesn't say when. Okay, eventually. Cool. Yep. Um, Next button. Uh, Someone called The Condor in Italy. Um, I made my first app for a university course, and my professor said it's good. But on Samsung device, it runs well, and on HTCs, it doesn't. Is there a good way to test my app on different devices? Emulators. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think what he's trying to say is that he's, for some reason his, his app doesn't work on Samsung, was it? It works on Samsung, but not on HTC. Yeah, there's a few things. Samsung. Uh, have that own um, online test studio that you can use if you become a Samsung developer. It's free for the first X number of tests. So go to Samsung developer and look for remote device access. And there you can check out devices. You can say, I want a Note 2 on firmware X. And when it's available, you get to just go into your web browser, upload your APK, and test it for free. So for Samsung's, it's not too bad. Uh, I don't know of any of the other Android OEMs that provide that service. I think so, Sony has a system where you can get real devices. Yeah, 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 Sony might have. Outside of that, you'd be looking at a cloud-based service. Uh, there are a number of them out there. Uh, they all charge for their services. Um, Calabash, Testroid, Device Anywhere, there's a bunch of them. Testroid, Device Anywhere, yeah, these things. So go to those websites, have a look. Use a popular search engine to find them. And uh, you should, yeah, be able to find 
good ways of eBay. uploading a test script and having it run across a number of hardware devices, and then you receive back the, the log dumps, the screenshots, and all that kind of thing. I'm interested in why he thinks it's a Samsung versus HTC issue. Mm. Uh, my, in my experience, like uh, if we're comparing similar devices across manufacturers, it isn't really the issue, for, like performance-wise. It might be, are you, you know, comparing a Galaxy S3 to a, you know, HTC mm -hmm. Wildfire or something like that. Like mm -hmm. then, those are two very, very differently spec priced devices. So, I'd be interested in some more details of what the different devices were. And also, you don't mention whether they're the same API levels. So, whether you're running on mm. ice cream sandwich versus honeycomb, not not honeycomb, but um, jelly bean or whatever, like or like use... a pre-hardware acceleration and post-hardware yeah. acceleration, for example. Yeah, so gingerbread versus mm -hmm. jelly bean, for example, would be very. Different. Take a look at your stats in the developer console as well. You'll be able to see what percentage of your installs are on each of the API levels and what percentage are on each device, that kind of thing. It might help you break it down and find out where the issues are. Um, those things. Another good way, um, well, uh, going low tech on this, is um, if you join your local Android user group, this is certainly a way we've seen before. Uh, it's a good way to meet with other Android developers, talk Android chat, but also you know to do a beta with them. Say, hey, can you guys run this and get like a, you know. A, the cross section of devices and tell me what what's going on and you'll get like you know some informed people giving you feedback on you know this performance is bad. They'll probably give you tips where they think you're going wrong in your code as well. Yeah, yeah free coffee. That's all it costs. <laughs> yeah. And be a good citizen. Yeah, yeah. be a good citizen. Offer to test their apps out as well when they yeah. need testing help because uh, testing apps on a wide variety of handsets is really um, helpfully done when it's distributed. Is that Julian who's just joined us now. Oh, no. Or run or run or like a, a small beta or something like that, right? Yes. Yep. Does anybody else who's just joined us, or anybody else in the uh, in the hangout, have a question for us? Is Amit in the hangout? He was in, and he left. And he was in, and he left. I think he's left. Okay. He's asked a question which I don't understand. Oh, Amit's there. He's talking. Oh, you are here. Did you ask your question, or you don't have a microphone? If you can copy and paste it in from the moderator. <clears throat> Let's watch him type. Yeah, we could just. Fair enough. So is this the question? <laughs> other than the Android development question. Yeah. Other than Android development, yeah, he's pasted it in. Uh, vote yes for this. Vote no for this. Interesting. He's copied that. He's copied quite just a lot. Of Let's go. I'll just read it down. Other than application development, what are the career opportunities in Android or the Android marketplace? Uh, this is a question of a lot of developers like me who want to shift from other platforms like Microsoft. Um, application development obviously split down both sides of writing your own applications and writing applications for other companies uh, are clearly the two key ways. And um, the most reliable income always comes from writing applications as a contractor or a consultant for other companies. So that's probably the, the easiest way to get into it until you're confident enough and have the, the ideas to start making your own applications on the side as well. Um, but Testing. there's a lot of companies set up these days surrounding the, the Play Store and Android. There's companies with their own um, application stores. There's companies who are publishing on behalf of other applications, because a lot of developers know how to write applications but don't know how to publish and market them. So there's a lot of application publishing companies. Uh, and marketing companies and advertising companies. <laughs> There's every single individual part of the ecosystem is taken care of. Um, Design, tests, all sorts. Absolutely, yeah. yeah even just tests the development process. Tests the side of it. Yeah. Because you get to see sort of the process of what software development is um, from a less technical sort of side. So you ease yourself into it. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's a good point. And we work with a lot of partners here. Um, we ask them how they do their testing, and some say we just outsource it. And um, it seems to be a, a pretty good solution for getting comprehensive tests done. Just let the experts who do testing across multiple devices every day do it for you. And you could get into that side of it. He's going to. Amit's just about to comment and say whether we've answered his question or not, or whether we just totally missed the uh, pitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Amit says good. Thanks. I think a good graphics now makes mm. it big. Good graphics for the marketplace to be able to come up and say, "This is going to sell your app," or the you know the eye catchers or something unique like that is a, a big thing. That's yeah, I think you're right. Design I agree. I think and, design is really important. <laughs> design is really important. <laughs> Make some apps, but yeah, there's, there's more developers than there are designers at the moment. People are now being able to find Android developers to make their apps, but being able to get a really good designer. Um, 
can be tricky. Plus, the market has enough apps, like enough OK apps. It needs yeah. like, gorgeous apps. <laughs> Nick's been saying this for over a year now. Make awesome apps. He had it tattooed once, but lays it off again. It's fine. <laughs> I would love to have a designer. Like, I do my stuff for free. I would love to have someone that's more in the design. I've tried to do it, but there's only a certain amount of design. You know, you either have it or you don't. <laughs> I was really lucky. I mean, I got absolutely zero design skills, and I had an app that looked pretty bad. I put it out there, and someone offered to redesign it, and I'm still building it. But it looks absolutely <laughs> epic. I'd never have come up with a design as good as Marie's did for mine. So there's, so, there's two good communities you can go to on, the, on G+. There's the, the Android Design like official community, and there's another one called Android Designers, uh, which is a invite-only, but just ask, and they'll kind of let you in unless you start posting spam, which gets you get banned. Um, but both are very, very active communities, and they have sections where you can say, here's my app, any pointers, and it's all very friendly, and you know, there's a section for asking for kind of people to help you out with stuff. So I'm not going to say they're going to necessarily design your your um, mm -hmm. app for free, but they'll give you some pointers. And Android user groups are being far more welcoming to designers these days as well. Or like Rich, you might find you know might be lucky and find a designer who's looking for a developer so that they can put their you know increase their portfolio or whatever to get more work. And yeah, I mean, instead of a developer who takes six <laughs> months to get the designs realised and still hasn't got them live. <laughs> Well, that was my fault because I did a beta test and so much feedback came back that I haven't been able to implement it. And then I took it to the Android framework and they said you shouldn't have done it that way. So. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. There you go. But it is open source, so I'll fix it up. And... There we go. Okay. And I'll talk and sell it. David wants a link to something. I'm not quite sure what. Well, the link to that, that group. What was oh, it? Plus Android developers. Oh, plus oh, Android, Android developers. Android no, designers. Sorry, Android plus Android designers. <laughs> I don't think it is that. But, <laughs> but it's there. Uh, if you go to the and plus Android developers, there should be the communities down the side there, right? So I'm talking about Android designers, not okay. designer, and not Android design. Not the official. And where's that? I got it. Never mind. Yeah. Excellent. Did you use a popular search engine? <laughs> Yeah, I'd use one of the, you know, small ones. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier than asking us. Um, How's the moderator looking? I think we've exhausted the moderator. Uh, hi, guys. Um, I've got that question if you want. Oh, there's nine. There's one more. Go for it. Um, it's a bit a bit tricky. Um, a bit, one of the requirements I've got to look into is to do with NFC uh, card emulation mode. Mm. Um, I know that's heavily restricted in Android. I don't know if anyone's done anything with um, Cyanogen Mod. I've, I've got some open um, card emulation uh, code. Has anyone done anything with that at all, or any experience? Maybe from around the people logged on to here as well. I don't know. I haven't. No. I know what you mean, but no, I haven't. No, unfortunately not. Okay. Non-trivial. Sure. Sure. Nope. But you want to emulate the an NFC card, or? Yes, I got to do um, low-level NFC card emulation. Because the uh, I, I there aren't there aren't that expensive. For I think for a buck you can get an NFC tag. Oh no, it's a um, it's a different mode from uh, tag reading. It's it's uh, a mode. It's a low-level mode. We send back and forth messages. To a device or to, or to a, a door reader. Hmm. Yeah. If you want to replace one of these things on your phone, uh, yeah. Pad. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks anyway, guys. Yeah. At least we can confirm that it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's non-trivial, and you get an offer. Enjoy. On your <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully, you haven't committed to too much. There's a good. A lot of information on this kind of stuff, is it? Um, do you know Nikolai Elenkov? Oh, yes. Yeah, you, you're aware of his blog. Yeah, I've been following that. Yeah, he did some really, really good low down, low level kind of like walkthroughs of how all this works. I think he talked about how to do this on, on, on CM. Yes, I need to get hold of that guy as well. My yeah, name. thank you. No um, got another question, the moderator. Oh, wow. From Alton. Uh, what is the technical problem to, dis to deploy a sandbox environment for in-app building? <laughs> You're saying, why haven't we done it yet? Why haven't we done it yet? <laughs> yeah. Done it. Yeah, why haven't we done it yet? That's a shame. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question. Really question but... Next one, we've got one that says, oh, back to what's available on Android devices if you don't publish through the Play Store. Can you use GCM if you haven't published through the Play Store? Yeah. It just needs to be on a device that has uh, our suite of services on it. So you still need to be running it on a device that has the Play Store, even if you didn't distribute your app through the Play so Store. So when you're developing your app before you publish it, you can still test it with GCM. And you can put references to it, can't you? Like, you have to have a dependency? Yeah, it uses lib, right, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that it will won't install or whatever. OK. I think we may have exhausted everything. We are. We're out of questions. We're out of questions in the moderator. Oh. Where is Sparky, by the way? Sparky? Uh, yeah. Last week, he's transferred teams. He's transitioned to an internal team at Google now. Hmm. So he will not be joining us again? Or no, he's no longer in. He's no he may pop his head in. He said he might yeah. pop his head in. He might pop his head in from time to time. He's still a good uh, source of Android knowledge for us. Um, but he's not in the Android developer relations team anymore. No. But he's still in the Munich office and he still works for Google. And he's on something super cool. Huh. Which away. you can't say because of the and. Don't talk about the laser beams. No, <laughs> oh, dude. Friggin' laser beams. <laughs> laser beams coming out of there. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. please do. Hi. Um, so I actually posted uh, uh, in the moderator earlier under Sim about the uh, Google Maps API. Uh -huh. um, I, I don't think I was clear enough, or I'm, or I'm confused a little bit. Um, is there, there is, so there is a way that I can publish an app that can only be accessed by a certain organization in the Google Play Store? I thought you said not in the Google Play Store. You right, well, I was, right, I did, but I was, I was confused. Basically, I want an app that only... I want to create a version of our app that only our salespeople can use for demo purposes. Absolutely, yes, you can do that. I can. If you're using a Google Apps domain, so if your company uses a Google Apps domain to host its infrastructure in any way, your domain. Yeah. Then you say you're at Domino.com. Then if you log into the That's Android cool. device slash Play Store, yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. You've got to go to the, the, go apps, to the, domain, apps, dashboard. the apps dashboard first and turn it on. Okay. And then you'll get an extra square inside um, in the apps section of devices that are logged in with one of your domain accounts, which is just your own internal applications. Okay. Uh, there was a blog post about it just before Christmas, I believe. I can dig it out for you. Oh, it was on the Android developer's blog anyway. Um, all, right, all right. I can check that. Yeah, the only issue I was having is just um, if you use a debug key, the maps don't show up except for on the device that you have plugged in, and then if you use a production key and try and distribute that APK, the app, the, the app won't even, the app will crash when you open it up, right? Or am I, am I mistaken? Because I've tried to, uh, like, I've tried to use a production key and take that APK and distribute it to some of our salespeople. Yeah. And then when, yeah, and then when they open up the app, it crashes instantly. Have you regenerated the maps key from using your distribution yeah. Yeah. That should be fine. It should be fine? Yeah. yeah, I've done that a number of times without uploading it to the Play Store and with uploading it to the Play Store. So even if you're saying if I use a production a production API key... Find the app with a production API key and then go into the developer console and use the production API key when you get your, your maps. Right. API key. Yeah. So okay. the Google Maps key is tied to your public key store that you sign your app with? Right. So if you're using a debug key for Google Maps, but your release key for your app, it won't work. We can list multiple key certificates next to your each API key as well, right? I think so. If not, you can it's get both. But OK. OK. All right. Well, thank you then. But you can do both anyway. You can have your own internal apps inside the Play Store for people on your own domain, and you can um, create maps. Okay. I did it using the new maps, but anyway, I haven't tried it with the old maps, maps V2. Yeah, I've only tried with the old maps. I haven't used oh, that's them. good. I've only tried it with the new maps, <laughs> so we're covered. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. Come back, though, and um, repost in the, the thread if it doesn't work for you, if you find anything. I will do that. The, um, getting all the ducks in a row to make it work can be a little bit stressful at times, to get all the, the dev console stuff and then the, the application built properly. OK. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Who we've got? Viva.
Vancouver's posted something into the chat. Yeah, you. Uh, it's the link for the private channel. Ah, oh, that's what it's called, private channel. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Timothy. Got a question for us? Right. So there's nine questions in the moderator. Yeah, no it's, it's might be the shortest ever. Early, yeah, me too. If nothing else coming in, we'll let you go and wrap up early. We're going to start playing with the format of this show as well over the next few weeks. Um, try and make the output of it more useful for people who are watching it afterwards. And uh, maybe formalize which questions we'll be answering during the show. We just have to work out what's best for you guys, because uh, I know that the majority of questions come in on the day of the show, because like that's obviously <laughs> like today. Yeah, we had one question before the show, and now we've got ten. Uh, Timothy has got a question. Go on. And we've also got one on the G plus thread. Yeah, I just found that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so while Timothy types out this question, why don't we go with the G plus thread one? Now? Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Um, so essentially, I have a question for in-app product. Um, so in that billing for offline functionality. Oh, that's how you. Oh. Oh. Sorry, sorry. I just realised how to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'll um. Yeah. So I I um. It's my first time on the hangout. Um. Okay, and welcome. Yeah. Um. I asked a question ages ago on um the, on the, moderator about um, preventing swiping to views on a view pager. Mm -hmm. And I took your advice, Chris, on um, on how on like on on preventing that by controlling the adapter and changing the size. Okay, I can't remember but, saying that. But uh, okay, <laughs> fair dues. Um, but um, yeah. So um, so it it works for all of all of um. For each page, except the first one, if there's just one view displayed in a view pager, it doesn't um, like show that sort of. Um, uh, it, I'm after the the feedback that you get on the right hand side. Oh, the thing. force field thing. Yeah, that's it. Um, so, can you remind what the original requirement was? Okay. Um, so, um, my view, like. Uh, the the screen that I'm trying to do is uh, I've got a load of um, swipeable views and like that you can only progress to um, to the next view once you've completed the first view. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a train. Sounds like a wizard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I couldn't, so I couldn't get it to like prevent the movement properly. Or I could, but it was buggy. Okay. So I um, I tried your method, Chris, and that and that worked. Um, but how do I how do I trigger it so that it would happen when there's just one view in the view pager? The view uh, be don't how? do any, don't intercept any Twitch events. Don't do anything. Just let the view pager do it. Because really? yeah, because if there's any one item in the view pager, it will it will handle all the edge effect anyway. Right. But I mean, I want to show the user that they need to f complete something on the page first before, so they can swipe. Instead of like having like a silly um, like toast that says, um, yeah. you know, you you need to complete the the thing first. Um, you need to complete uh, the form first. How can I sort of control when edge effect is shown? Yeah. So there's no real easy way of doing that. Right. Um, sort of. Taking the view page of source into your tree and hacking it, yeah, <laughs> right? Um, because edge effect isn't sort of exposed to you. It's supposed to be something that's transparent to the user and also to, and right. to the developer. Okay, so even if we were, and we we want to change the color as well, like is that also going? Um, need... It's all done on drawables. Mm -hmm. um, right. So you you'd have to do it yourself. Like right. It. Not that I can remember. It's all done on drawables, so. Mm. No, I don't think. Well, I don't know. I can't remember, but I don't think you can. Okay, fair dues. Um, I don't, as a quick thing, Roman Nurek has uh, repl sort of released his wizard. I can't remember the wizard. Page oh, the wizard pager. Yeah, I'll have a look at that. And that's a really good example of how to do this nicely. Um, okay. So have a look at that and see how he's done it. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. 
Okay, let's grab that one out of the uh, cheaper stream then. Uh, yeah, so in-app billing for offline functionality, how can I make sure the user has access for some function on my app if this functionality is dependent on in-app billing? Um, Sorry. So essentially, <laughs> if they want to charge for a certain aspect of an app but the mm -hmm. user isn't online, how can you still essentially charge them and give them access to it? If they're not online. Yeah. Well, you can't charge them if they're not online. Yeah. Um, and your app should clearly cache whether or not it's being purchased or not. Well, um, no. you should be able to restore transactions and it all cache. But if you're not else. online, no, I know we have the, uh, the cached Play Store. Yeah, so if you're using the V3 that you're not building now, it's all cached anyway for you. So there's no real need to cache the result itself now. Oh, it depends on the wonderful call cool restore transactions. Yeah, so I imagine um, Jan's just trying to essentially store the transaction and then kick it off in advance in the future. But the way of doing that is that things you can't force the user. If you want to kick it off again in the future, you can't force them to actually go through with it. Yeah. So you're giving it them for free. Um, so it all depends on your business model, but I, I, you probably want to just wait till they go back online before you actually give them access. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how does that work with in-app purchases? Like, say you're buying some gold coins to get to the next level, and then you're not connected, and then you're like, oh, I got to the next level. <laughs> and there's a lot of code you have to do, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got simplified in V3, right? So it's all synchronous. So. Yeah. V3 helped a lot with that. It is synchronous, and the Play Store does cache the transactions. So basically, if it doesn't succeed, then don't progress, don't unlock whatever yeah. content. Just tell the user they need to be online. Yeah. Because Hopefully, it's an edge case. The yeah. Majority of users online, or the users that aren't online, uh, understand why they can't purchase something. Okay. Has anything else come in? We have some new joiners, so. Oh yeah. Anybody else in the hangout have a question? Doesn't look like it. We've got some more questions Ooh, on the yeah, team yeah, password. Yeah. Much more. Go for it. Um, all my text use um, use SP, but one user asked for text size options. What exactly does he or she want? Isn't there an option in the settings to change the font size? Um, and this is from mm -hmm. Catalin, I think. Um, so yeah, generally the whole point of SP is so that it acknowledges the system-wide kind of text size preference. Chances are the user has used an app where the app itself actually has additional text sizes, um, as in, say, I want to increase the size large, medium, or small. Um, and that could be related to the system font size as well. Um, so I imagine that's what it's kind of asking for. Yeah, it's quite common. You see it in like news reading apps and something like that. They'll quite commonly have a text size option and let you bump it up a little bit if you feel like it. So I guess that's what the user is requesting. So yeah, the answer you could say is, hey, go to settings and change the setting. But if they don't want to change the font size for their entire device and they just want to change it in your application, that's fair enough. I could understand why, especially yeah. if you've chosen particularly small fonts. <laughs> but there, yeah, there are the two options. So think about yeah whether it makes sense for your app, whether you think it's a common use case. Which yeah. might not be. Hmm. Um, you can always use magnification as well, whatever that three finger tap is. Is that the accessibility? Yeah. Screen hmm. notification. Cool. So unless there's anything coming from the moderator, I think we've exhausted all the questions in your chat. Okay, guys. I think we might be done for this week. Oh, there is one. Oh. Oh. Every time that's the first time I said that. Now it's not the uh, shortest ever. It's soon it'll be the longest ever. <laughs> David, the movie you right. saw was was it a uh, open garden? Yeah, and I and I I've been looking for it during the show, and they cut it out of their uh, their recorded video. I was watching it live. Okay, I got the internet side, so yeah. So Open Garden stopped doing um, the NFC, and they're just doing the Bluetooth only mm. for communicating, and that's where they open up a VPN tunnel between all the different devices and they measure the output and they share the bandwidth between them so if another device comes on and then it says it's connected to Wi-Fi or if it's using um, 
whatever HSPA or whatever, it'll they'll share bandwidth and go back and forth. If only one has it, they'll all do it. And since it's a VPN tunnel, it only looks like it's coming from that device. Okay. Cool. Uh, the extra question is just landing the moderator is from the Condor again. He asked, might not be the right place, but is there an opportunity to do inter internships in Europe? I'm guessing with Google as a uh, user experience. Uh, so I don't think anyone here knows. I think if you go to... They're all on google.com slash jobs. Yeah, google.com slash jobs and then go to the internship section. I'll have all the details. I'm, I don't know where the internships land, but there certainly is user experience in Android done in Europe, so it's entirely possible. Yeah. Fino Raj is out of the question in the chat stream. Yeah. So I have one question. If we extend application class, sometimes when we clear the activities from the stack by pressing the back button, and we then launch the app, sometimes the last instance of the application class is still there. Um, but the application object um, stays alive for as long as the process is alive, so it's, it's a singleton. Um, so yeah, there's not much else to say other than that, really. Um, I'd wonder why you're trying to, why this is affecting your app. Because um, if, if the state you're trying to keep is specific to an activity, then it should be in the activity, not the application. Yeah, so, sounds like a to me. Yeah, so only keep sort of global stuff that you don't care the lifetime of, really, in the application. So stuff like caches and that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah. You can always empty the back stack. <laughs> yeah, I think the question's more about why sometimes the application keeps alive and why it doesn't. So when you press back and like... So I'd say what you're reporting is expected behavior. But yeah, it's probably that it doesn't work as you imagined it works. Yeah. Back isn't close. Back is... It's always the same problem when you when you talk to uh, uh, Android developers starting the, the the difference between the home and the back button and they think the activity is close when you put back or home. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. so you have to watch a video when you download the APK. Yeah. Of the life cycle. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> what I think is Oh, is, is that been Like uh, pressing the activity. Yeah. I can't, can't hear you. Yeah. Can you speak up? Make the microphone closer. Uh, I was just asking, like, uh, if uh, if I have a stack of activities and I, I continuously press back, I mean, cleared all the activities from the stack, and I mean, uh, when all the activities are cleared, my application gets closed, and when I relaunch the application, the instance of my last, uh, I mean, the instance of application class is still there. I mean, like when I come back, uh, the values which I assigned previously to the application object are still there. That's right. That's correct. Correct. Yeah, that's yeah. that's function as expected. Okay, that's uh, expected behavior. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank. That's so that the when you launch the app again, it's in the cache. It'll it's faster next time. Isn't that correct? Yeah, Android will do things to try and keep. Um, activities and applications around and only kill them when it's got memory pressures. Yeah. So if you actually need to force those values to reset, just uh, grab them on on pause or somewhere further down the uh, the life cycle and reset them yourself. Uh, Ouya has joined us apparently. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Well, this this hangout was going to finish 20 minutes ago because we ran out of questions, but then it just kept on just the about surviving. So. You guys have got so much good stuff to share. How can it stop? <laughs> Just a quick question for Matt. The Animote protocol, is that open sourced? Uh, so we've open sourced the libraries that we're using for Android. Um, you can also find it in the... So there's, there's a library for it. There's also just a plain Java library that... I can't remember who did it. I'll dig it out for you, but there's an animate library which is just purely Java, doesn't rely on, on any Android side of things. Um, the actual Google TV implementation I don't think is open sourced. I think that's kept in-house. So, yeah, I think it's only the actual use of the protocol that's open sourced. Okay, cool. I'll let you guys get to your Google cups of coffee now. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that coffee. All right. Oh. What's that? Oh, Lyndon's saying he had an OUYA demo room at the Melbourne Android Developer Meetup tonight. Excellent. That's funny, because he's in Melbourne tonight. It's already happened. Yeah. Oh, had. Tonight. Had already had one tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Gotcha. There's one more that's come through on the Google oh, Buzz today. Yeah. Yesterday. What are the drawbacks of using config changes orientation on activity to prevent it from recreating um, after screen orientation change? Only one I found is that I cannot use different layout for landscapes. Um, well, that's else. the main one, but you can. You can call request layout anyway. So it's not going to automatically process it for you. But uh, you can do, but it's also to do the action bar. So the action bar has got optimizations in landscape where it goes slightly smaller, mm -hmm. um, which won't automatically happen if you override the configuration. Um, but if you call request layout, will it? I don't think you will. Really? I don't know. I don't think you will. But I, I could be wrong there. Mm. So we certainly see uh, video apps and things working this way, that they have the video playing, and you certainly don't want to restart the video or interrupt the video when you rotate it. So they'll do the orientation change themselves and then request layout, but keep the, the video playing inside the little video player window. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I don't think this is what it says. OK. Is that uh, it? Well, also, it depends on what your logic is. Cause, you know, if you're depending on getting your on pause and then on resume, Call to kind of like you know manage your state somehow, mm -hmm. then that's obviously not going to get called. Yeah, you might have your own custom it. views. So right. be careful of that. And any framework you might be using might rely on that. Yeah, yeah. retain yeah. configuration but state, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. it's been de deprecated now, so yeah, shouldn't really rely on it. Okay. Done. We're going to go for the button. We're going to end the broadcast. There's nothing else coming in. No one else. Thank you, gentlemen. Every time Thank Rich wraps so up the session, everybody take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's 10 shots today. All right, cheers, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>